Hey everybody, Unstable Gamer here and welcome back to TMNT Mutant Madness. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest dev Q&A and this comes straight from their Discord channel. So we're just going to jump in there, take a look at some of the latest stuff, the burning questions that people have been having about this game and we're going to answer some of those right now. But first, before we do, if you're just now finding this channel and you want to stay up to date with this and other games, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out. All right, and welcome back. So we're just going to jump right into this Discord and talk about some of the burning questions, like I said, that people have about this game. There's a lot of questions here, and the coolest thing about this game and about this Discord is how communicative, I like that word, communicative, I didn't even stutter on it, <laughs> the devs and the community manager and everybody have been with this game constantly communicating with the player base. So if you're not part of the Discord, definitely join the Discord. Uh, they have a dev Q&A channel right here and that's exactly what we're gonna be running down right now. But first, again, before we jump into that, just a reminder, all my social media links are in the description of every video. Definitely check them out. Join us on Discord where we're talking about the game and sharing strategies and tips and all sorts of stuff. So come join the fun there as well. And then I stream three days a week, a week Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Currently, TMNT is not on the schedule yet because I'm, I'm kind of blocked. I'm blocked right now and I can't do anything and there's nothing really to, for me to stream right now. I'm kind of building up my roster and everything. That's a different video though. So, but uh, definitely check out on Twitch as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this right here. So just uh, a few of these questions I want to pick out. Um, so Marshall Kalen, one of the developers, answers the question specifically about rare equipment, but Basically, what I want to call out in this one is for anybody interested in, in higher level equipment and stuff, that is coming from your PvP rewards, so that should be your main source. So make sure you're doing your PvP. Climb as high as you can to the ladder. There was currently, there, there was recently a change that happened just today, as of the recording of this video, to change kind of how the Dimension Clash works to make it easier for people to find other teams that are... Um, close to their power level because the power levels have been very mis mi mismatched. So this is supposed to help with that and help people climb a little more fluidly. So we will see what happens after this, but that is going to be your main source for equipment. All right, and this one right here. So I asked a question, when you go into PVP, you see the little turtle vans down there at the bottom and when you click on one of them, it shows a list of characters and it'll say like plus 200, or if there's two, it says plus 200, plus 400. My question there was, what is that specifically? Does that count towards points or does that count, count towards power level? And the answer is it seems it looks to be a power boost. And the higher your, your power level, the more points you should be gaining in, in, in order to climb that PVP ladder. So if you've seen those, and if you have those characters, definitely use those characters if it helps you get that power boost. If it doesn't, if you have a stronger team to use, then just use your stronger team. Otherwise, um, use those characters there in those, uh, like right now it's like Mikey and Napoleon and a couple other characters, Baxter, to kind of get the edge to boost up your power level against your opponents. I mean, you may hear that? Just, woo! <laughs> Voice. Anyway, I digress. Anyway, so... Um, use those characters to give you a little bit of a boost there to get the edge on your opponent. All right, another one here. Someone asked if we're ever going to get actual heals. And Marshall Kalen, Kylan, Marshall here said, it's not impossible, but if they ever added those heals, then it'd be rare. And it'd probably be more limited to self-healing, which makes me think it's something that they've given some thought to. And maybe we'll see something come a little bit later in the game. So something to keep an eye out for there as well. All right, another one here, just to kind of give a basis for the characters and also maybe give a reason to some of the character models too. I know like one of the biggest pieces of feedback I've seen regarding visuals is April. So right here, the, the game is gonna stick to the 87 visual style. So that's what they're trying to recreate. And that's the turtles that I grew up with was back in 87. So they're gonna be sticking with that, but it's possible to bring characters in from other iterations of the franchise as long as certain conditions are met. And typically those just have to do with uh, license rights and things like that and, and what they're able to negotiate. But primarily it looks like they're gonna stick with the 87 visual style. There's a whole lot of different visual styles for the turtles because they span that, this, uh, this IP spans generations. But that's kind of what they're going for. And I think they've pretty much nailed it too. I mean, it, I mean, it, it does bring me back to that 
that era of Turtles and the games and everything that were coming out at that time as well. So another one here kind of goes to new characters that you might see, see in the game. Obviously, they're going to be adding new characters to the game, but they also, Marshall also did call out there that we may see variations of existing characters as well. So may see multiple types of uh, variations of Mikey or April or Casey Jones or whoever. So just uh, something to keep in mind there. All right, and another one here. So someone asked about scrolls. So if you take a look at the season pass and you look at the different rewards that you get from there, you're gonna see these two scrolls. And those scrolls, people are asking, what are those? Well, those are titles. So when you go into your profile, in your character profile, you can see underneath your name, it says titles. You can click on that. And if you have anything available, you can select some. I think I've got like four now, which is pretty cool. I just got one, some sort of, gala I got Galactic Warlord out of, the battle pass so that was pretty cool so you can go ahead and give yourself a cool little title all right so a lot of questions that have also been coming around clans and ranks and things like that so there's a couple questions here a couple answers from marshall so the disciple rank is cosmetic has no difference in your permissions the ninja rank is an officer rank it allows promotions and demotions and allows them to kick lower ranked members as well as inviting and accepting applications as well also, someone asked about the boosts here. So when you are in your clan and you see in the top left of your clan screen, you're going to see that number. That number correlates to your battle pass. So the higher you are in your battle pass, that adds to that. So your entire alliance. That's the best way right now to determine activity in your alliance is kind of watch. You got to watch people's scores and everything like that as they move towards the battle pass and complete those those dailies every single day. As those total up amongst your entire alliance, uh, alliance you get you get three boosts for your ooze production. You, you get one at 100 once everybody, once your alliance, your clan hits a score of 100 and then 200 and then 300. The boost here, I've seen, uh, Marshall says he believes it's about 10% 10, 10 per boost. I also heard someone else say 15%, not sure. Basically, what you want to do, though, is make sure your your clan is active and make sure you hit those boosts, the 1, 2, and 300% boosts. Because definitely, ooze, ooze definitely racks up when you are, are leveling up these characters and everything up into the higher levels. You can zoom through the first few levels pretty quick and not use a whole lot of ooze until you get up towards the higher levels where you're just spending a ton. So make sure your clan is active. Make sure you hit those point totals. And... If you're not seeing people who aren't active, then you're going to have to remove them. Hopefully, you have something set up like a Discord or something so you can communicate within your clan and uh, keep people active and interested and constantly working towards a common goal. That's really the only reason for clans right now is the boost. Again, it's a pretty good boost. They are working to add additional functions, features, at clan activities, and things like that, which uh, I cannot. I cannot wait to see more of that. So just uh, really... Um, really excited for all that stuff because these types of games really are social games. Even though this is kind of an idle game, these are still social games. And if a clan can come together and try and achieve one common goal, that's 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 where the fun is in this kind of stuff, in my opinion. All right, next. This was uh, a question someone asked you about a global chat or clan chat. There is currently no plans for an in-game global or general chat, which I have to tend to agree with because most games that do have a general chat, it's just a bunch of junk in there anyway. People just spouting off. And then as far as clans and stuff like that, it's cool to be able to interact in the game, but it's so clunky. The clan chats or alliance chats and everything, I just... I don't know. In my opinion, they don't work out very well. So set up a Discord, something like that, so that you guys can communicate when you're in an alliance, when you're in a clan or whatever. And that goes for any game that you're in. A Discord is really a good medium to support something like that. All right, there's a question about season rewards. So Marshall says there's no, no immediate plans to revise season re uh, rewards. Seasons are eight weeks, to be clear. But it is likely something will be, will be discussed internally. One of the concerns about, about these season rewards is that there's just not enough. Some of the rewards for the events and things like that just really don't reward how much actually that you put into it. Uh, and it doesn't balance out. So like for me, the battle pass, I think the battle pass is great. I think the uh, there's a fair amount of gems and everything that come out of there. But it's all just green hero bits. We need to add in, or the game needs to add in, blue once you get higher up there and maybe even towards the end. Because there's 100 levels in these things. 
maybe more towards the end of it, you start getting some of those four-star hero bits. Because those are pretty rare. The four-star hero bits are super rare. It takes a very long time to get a four-star hero. So I think they need to beef up that battle pass and those rewards just a little bit more. And some of the re rewards in, in the events and stuff. Because a lot of it is is green hero bits a little bit of blue hero bits from the events and then you get these canisters the eight hours and the four hours for scraps and ooze and stuff like that so looks like they may have a discussion internally about that we'll see kind of what happens in the coming months so one thing that i asked here so i am stuck on 18-1 and i am beating teams or was beating teams 40,000 power level above my team so my question was basically what is the acceptable range there is there a range that has been set with going 40,000 power level above it, it's are they going to scale that down? From Marshall, the answer from Marshall really is there aren't exact numbers, but while players are definitely intended to be able to win above their power level with good team comps and smart play, not by adapting to their situation, but mainly playing one specific strategy pattern. And I think what he's talking about there, that specific strategy pattern, is the stuns. I think stuns are super strong in the game right now. It allows you to go way far and be able to uh, defeat teams that are much higher than you i think they're probably going to adjust that a little bit but uh, because he says right here that's definitely not intended so just something to keep in mind there as far as the stun teams and stuff like that right now stun teams are super strong right now you can stun lock bosses for an extended period of time and i'm sure they're collecting data on that and they can see all this stuff so um that i think is probably gonna die down here in a while all right, another question that comes up right here. He's uh, Marshall's got a big old long explanation here that goes into class ratings and things like that. But class ratings have uh, have changed recently as of today, so there's some changes in there. Uh, the blue shield is supposed to be your rating, I believe, is what he said. Uh, clash match banking is based on the player's clash rating, which is the blue shields. So, uh, but also goes into this one right here, and this is this is the one I want to talk about really quick. The de the game is not designed to operate on multiple servers, so there's a a whole lot of conversations about where you have a beta and you have a whole lot of beta players in that. They're in their own shard, they're on their own server, and then when it goes live, there's a global server or a global shard, and they don't intermix because the beta players. They're typically stronger, right? They've been playing for a while, more experienced. They've been able to level up their roster and everything, while the global players are right there starting at the beginning. So there's no no crossing there until typically you get to a certain point that says, all right, I think for the most part, the population has balanced out a little bit. So then they'll go ahead and, and combine them. I've seen that in, in other games. This one here, so this game specifically is, um, is, is all on one server, but they do separate. This is where some people have gotten confused. Everybody plays on the same server. However, when it comes to PvP and when it comes to certain events, there are specific leaderboards. So there's multiple leaderboards, but one server. So when you are looking for an alliance or, or something, you should be able to find them. It shouldn't matter where they are as far as leaderboards or whatever. And then when you are looking at who's, who's at the top who's number one on one leaderboard is going to be different as far as somebody on another, on another leaderboard because they're trying to keep that within a certain number of players. I'm, I can't remember exactly what, what number that is, but it's all one server. Everybody should be able to find everybody, but there are leaderboards separating for events and PVP. So just kind of, hopefully that makes, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, hopefully that clears up some questions that some people might have. Uh, another question here about the store. So the store is on a weekly cycle and boxes reset on Monday. So just a heads up there. But there's other offers can appear on other days. So you're going to see different offers. I've seen a couple different offers pop up this week. But you're on a weekly cycle on the store and those boxes, those boxes reset, those tiered boxes reset every week on Mondays. And then another question here has to do with are, are we going to be able to farm levels that we've beaten already? That is not that is not in the the game plan. That's been answered quite a few times. They're pretty solid on that. So we're not going to be able to go back back and play other levels so that we can farm materials and things like that. But Marshall does say we do plan on adding other features that you can play. Maybe it's a, a farming event or or a farming game feature or something like that. So it they are things. There are things that that the developers are looking at when it comes to that. I like this, I like this. So again, back to clans. Clan clan events are definitely coming, so I can't wait to see that. We talked about that a little bit earlier that they have some stuff in the works. Clan chat is something that they'd like to do, 
but can't currently say anything about. And there are currently no plans for global. We covered that. But right there, confirmation that clan events are definitely coming. We don't know what that looks like, but pretty excited for that. And right here, just kind of going back to the leaderboards and stuff. So there's no limit on the number of leaderboards. The size of each leaderboard is capped, but the number of boards is dependent on the number of total players playing the game. So I don't know what that cap is, but there's, uh, there's an explanation from Marshall right there. All right, and just to wrap this up, has to do with daily quests and refreshes and things like that. There's been a lot of questions around this, especially since when you go in the game, you can't necessarily see the quests that are required for the battle pass. So in the guides and tips, Ellie answers here, these are the quests that you have for the battle pass to get your rewards. So play five PvP battles and win one battle. So you only have to win one, but play five. Upgrade a hero, then upgrade a hero three times. Obtain a hero play one mission, and upgrade a room. So those are the things that you need to do every single day to level up your battle pass, level up your clan so you can unlock those clan rewards that the ooze production. And as far as resets, right here, so at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. UTC, PvP energy refreshes daily, limited time quests refresh daily, those are those battle pass ones, Dimension Clash ends and starts weekly on Mondays. Season and corresponding economy events end or start eight weeks long on Thursdays. So keep that in mind. Tier boxes refresh, uh, refresh weekly on Mondays. Something we just talked about just a little bit ago. And then at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard, 8 Eastern, 12 a.m. UTC, daily free box in the shop refreshes. And then Battle Crate adds refresh. Players can see up to six per day randomly after a battle. So there's been some questions about that too that come up. Battle Crate adds six times a day randomly after a battle. So even those battles that you're going into and you're losing, you can get one of those ads to kind of continue to build up some resources and everything that you need. All right, and there you go, everybody. That's what I had for you today. If you like this information, if you'd like to see more of these videos, definitely let me know in the comment section. If you have additional questions or anything that you would like answered in a video or just responded to in comments or over on Discord, let me know in the comment section below as well. I'm hoping this was helpful for you. Definitely tell me. Give it a like if you do uh, think that this was helpful and you do want to see more videos like this. All right, everybody, as always, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button and share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Take care, everybody, and we'll talk to you next time.